are learning a lot here talking to Mr. Spangler. We're just sitting here just talking, look at Chatting. this all fancied up and everything. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just going to create an oil spill and then clean it up before you're very young. <laughs> That's exactly all. right. Hey, uh, <laughs> I, I, and thank you for pointing that out. I, uh, <laughs> I get a chance to travel with a hundred of the most excited, motivated teachers you could ever imagine. That love science. We set sail for a thing called Science at Sea. Um, we tour the Inside Passage of Alaska. Mm -hmm. So now with internet technology and everything, uh, it's been hard in the past to get your images back and everything. Actually reporting all live from the ship, but we're going to do that and uh, get you some stuff next week. So I'll on show Facebook, you what it's like. right? You're on Facebook, live and then we're going to send you some okay. packages cool. here as well. Cool. One of the things that we're talking about is the ecology. What happens to this pristine kind of environment? We aren't even visiting some glaciers that have changed over the last 10 years because it's not even it's not that spectacular. So we're mm. deviating and going in some mm. different ways. Let's recreate an oil spill because one of the things people always ask about is an oil spill. How do you clean it up? Here's water, and to that, I, I'm going to put chemically something that's as close to crude oil as I could find. It's nice red color. It's called Marble Mystery Oil. Don't worry about that. It's oh, a okay. hydrocarbon. You actually put it in your oil, I guess, uh, or your, your gas. Additive or yeah, something. An additive. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it has. But it's pretty similar to crude oil. Very, very similar. So if you take a look at it here, see that uh, layer yeah. that's floating. Yes. Now the worst thing you can do in an oil spill is to break it up and make it look like it's disappeared and let it sink to the bottom. Got it. The good news is it's on top. The bad news also is it's on top because animals, see, you know, things like that will yes, kind of come up. Yes, the first thing a bird hits. If it, right. right. You yeah. got it. So believe it or not, a guy who was working for the oil industry actually invented this about 25 years ago. It has been so long to get it to market with all the EPA regulations, but watch this. This is called EnviroBond 403. The gentleman who invented it is a gentleman by the name of Larry Thompson. He was just trying to find a very simple way to hook on to that long chain of molecules. And so this hydrocarbon will do it. Uh, this hydrocarbon that's here will hook onto this polymer. Now by definition, a polymer is just a long chain of molecules. And you can see, if you look down here, it's already started to become rubberized, right. so to speak. This one has been sitting for just a little while. I'll let that one continue to work. We Brandon, started reach this in there and pull that out. Yes, <laughs> reach in and pull that out. Look at that. See so you can lift it. It's a pancake. Is that amazing? Wow. Absolutely amazing. So literally, you would have a giant oil island floating around the ocean. Good news, you can now recover this, break it up, burn it. There's a BTU rating on it. Doesn't huh. release any bad by byproducts to the environment. And I said, don't for, don't let me forget this. They can actually take and allow uh, animals uh, and and birds who have gotten this uh, the oil on their skin using this powder here to absorb and pull that oil take off. It off. Isn't that amazing? Look at this stuff. It's, with there it. it is. It's starting to and chunk the whole up process there. It's works. frustrating. It took so huh. long. But, Absolutely. I mean, that's a, a, a and the, test for and everything. And the, uh, you know, the, the Gulf spill was so big that they couldn't attack it fast enough. So they put this material on this pellet-like material or pellet-like uh, structure and tried to put it down, but they couldn't absorb it fast enough. Uh, so these are the kinds of things we want teachers to take back to their kids. When we're talking about creativity and innovation, we want to talk about these kinds of things so they can kind of think about it. And uh, also we want them to just love what they see around them and bring that pristine kind of beauty back to the classroom. Steve Spangler, thanks so much for Thank you.